Colourful Rumsey is a film miscellany of scenes taken around 1948 to about 1952. Uh, this is evident, of course, from the fact uh, that at one point German prisoners of war may be seen walking along the hundred. The music for the film has been specially recorded in Rumsey Abbey and the organist is George Goulding. A.E. Turner presents Colourful Romsey and there's the marketplace with the Romsey Working Men's Conservative Club in the background and there's one of the green Hanson Dorset buses waiting to go to Southampton, just one and sixpence return. And here a view of Romsey Abbey and uh, houses down by Abbey Meads. And that was Stanley Vane's parrot with the background of the Abbey. And that's on the way down to the War Memorial Park, just over the bridge. And in the hundred, there's Timothy White's, which is now uh, Boots, the chemists, and Pearson Sons, the bakers, and two German prisoners of war just walked across the screen from right to left. And that's the original sign that my wife made, which started up the Royal Air Forces Association in Romsey. And there's Latimer Street with FCM Vokes, the newsagent's shop with the ca canopy out. Holman's, the greengrocers. Uh, and on the right was uh, Purchase and Sons, the uh, grocers. Now on the right is T. Ely and Sons, the Ironmongers, that's on the extreme right. And uh, in the background, of course, once again, runs the Abbey. Uh, Woolworths uh, and the international stores, the groceries store um, in Romsey. And uh, Hyde and Co., the seed and grain merchants, which is now a uh, hardware house, uh, green Hanson Dorset bus goes by, and one of Strong and Co's brewery lorries, uh, closely followed by a royal blue coach. And that was a fish shop that was nearly opposite the present Wait Rose supermarket. One of Reed and Malick's little lorries just proceeded from left to right. Um, there's Boots' uh, old shop uh, next to the uh, Conservative Club. Uh, of course, they have now moved to Timothy White's uh, premises as you saw just now. Weber's restaurant that was uh, that is now the Palmerston restaurant and before that it was owned by the Turner family. Not, no, no connection with uh, myself. Uh, there's some Battle of Britain posters. The Cycle Works and Wiggins and Son that is uh, now a lingerie shop and the chemist is still a chemist. Lloyd's Bank, Rumsey and you'll see how very very dirty the front of the building became uh, during World War II. And up on the top you will see the cupola um, which eventually became dangerous and pieces of it started falling down onto the pavement nearly killing people and uh, you'll notice if you look at it nowadays it looks rather different. S.J. Bourne and Son, the fish merchants, is now Fox and Sons and this is now the entrance to Broadlands. Uh, church view along by the bypass. Uh, that is uh, Blue Mists, Oakley Gardens, Botley Road, which was where I was living earlier on. And um, now we, we're going to see some Rumsey flowers. And since there's not a great deal I can say about the flowers, they're pretty self-evident, perhaps you'd like to turn up the sound channel of the video and listen to the organ of George Goulding just for a few moments. Uh, there is Palmerston House in the background, which was the boys' home. Uh, presided over by Mr. Orton. There is one of our cats. When we were at Blue Mists, that one was called Silver and that one was called Blackie. Two dearly loved cats. Silver and blacky, and it's silver again.
and uh, a red admiral butterfly. And uh, there's some bees there on that plant. I'm sh ashamed to say I don't know the name of, it, of the plant. But I'm sure you do. Well, there's some delphiniums anyway. Blue. Nice lovely blue. Some love in the mist. I rather like this shot of the white blossom against the blue sky. And that's a double poppy. Now this is next all but one to us at Blue Miss. You notice the garden is concreted down. Uh, that was done by Mr. Hatcher. And the people who followed in the house after them ripped all the concrete up and replaced it with uh, a green lawn. During the war, those chains which you could see just then were all taken away. Now here we're in one of A.R. Wills Limited uh, glass houses. Uh, A.R. Wills Limited, of course, were mainly uh, suppliers of tomatoes for the south of England and cucumbers, but they also provided pot plants as well, as you'll see here. And there is the late, the late Jimmy Wills, the son of A.R. Wills, tomatoes for vitamins. These were our next door neighbours in Oakley Gardens. To Mrs. Tonkin, T O N K I N. There's Mr. Orton digging for victory, uh, and now some azaleas. That's Bernard Wiggins on the staff of Lloyds Bank Romsey at that time. Here are the silver cups at the Romsey show. This must have been about 1951, I should think, uh, for the first three years. Lloyds Bank did the financial uh, business with, for the show with a taxi. Uh, we went round all the uh, gates and threw the money into great big sacks and then sorted it all out later in the evening, about nine o'clock back at uh, Lloyds Bank Romsey. J.R. Woodenco's uh, display at the show. There's myself on the left of the picture, the Lloyds Bank Caravan. Must be in about 1951, I think. There's uh, Edgar Fry lighting his pipe. Uh, that was the first year that we had a caravan uh, up there. There's Douglas Pear, who's still with us, living at Braishfield. Edgar Fry looks at a prospectus, doesn't like it, and shuts it up again. And there is myself leaning on the counter with the RAF Association badge in my lapel. And we have a visitor into the Lloyds Bank caravan. And that is the view through one of the side windows of the caravan. Edgar Fry on the left, Douglas Pear with his pipe on the right. Aspect the oldest house in Romsey in the Palmerston Street, and it's now a restaurant. There's a view of uh, Broadlands taken from the bridge, and there's a view from the other side of the bridge looking at the Tess, the River Tess. And there's the bridge concerned, and some more of the River Tess.
Uh, that is uh, uh, the rear view of the War Memorial Park, as you might say, um, uh, the children's swings. And uh, there are some uh, ducks on the test. Uh, this building uh, used to be the workhouse um, uh, when it was known as the Gardens. I believe it is now known as Nightingale Lodge. Here's the Plaza Cinema, uh, which was bought a little while ago by the Romsey Amateur Operatic and Dramatic Society. And here it is at night, with the um, uh, neon lighting showing, as it was at that time when it was a cinema. Uh, all that uh, neon lighting has, in fact, been stripped off uh, since the Operatic Society took, the pla took over the plaza. And now Douglas Fairbanks Jr. crowns the festival queen. Now this was uh, outside the town hall, and uh, in a moment you'll see the uh, Douglas Fairbanks Jr. stepping up onto the rostrum. Uh, there's the mayor and mayor's go up first, and it, oh, there's Douglas Fairbanks there between Mr. J. B. S. Attlee and Mrs. Attlee, uh, the mayor and mayor's of Romsey. Uh, that microphone, by the way, which you can see there, was very, very poor. You could hardly hear a word on it. Uh, here's the uh, festival uh, queen coming along, with, and at her feet is young Peter Knight, son of Dr. H. B. Knight. Um, I think he's now aged about 40 and farming in the West Country. But uh, he covers himself with glory in just a moment, as you will see. Mr. J. B. S. Attlee addressing. And uh, Douglas Fairbanks Jr. turns on the charm. And here comes young Peter Knight. And whoops a daisy, he's on the ground. The crown is picked up, and Douglas Fairbanks Jr duly places it on the head of the uh, festival queen. This is the bypass before those poplar trees had to be cut down because they became unsafe. What a pity it was, because it really was lovely. And uh, there's the um, Palmerston Street and the Crossfield Hall. The Horse and Jockey Public House, one of Strong's houses, is now a veterinary surgeon's surgery. Another view of the bypass which when I first came to Romsey in 1932 just didn't exist. And all the traffic from London to Bournemouth used to go down Bell Street. You would hardly believe it. The Stroud School Sports. Uh, there's uh, Douglas Fair and Mrs. Fair. And uh, uh, Vi Pottinger. And that's Vi Pottinger's little girl. And that's Douglas Fair's little girl, as they were then probably nearly grandparents by the time I'm speaking now, in December 1987. And uh, here are the sports. And somewhere among all this lot is my own son, but we know never be able to find him. Mrs. Henry and Miss Butler in the pink. Miss Butler was uh, teaching at the school. There's Mr. Reg Lehman of A.R. Wills Limited with the red rose in his lapel. Douglas Fair urging on his then young son. And this was the tea party 
after the sports events. And there in the background is Stroud School. Charter Day in Romsey when Her Majesty the Queen came to Romsey and uh, unfortunately I had uh, the zoom lens had not been invented and uh, the result is you will only uh, get a glimpse of the Queen. Had I had a zoom lens I could have done wonders but I, I say hadn't been invented. There's the post office in the background which is now the National Westminster Bank. You can just see Prince Philip there in the background behind the Queen, almost as a silhouette. And the Mayor presents something or another to the Queen, but I don't quite know what. He bows to her. And now you can see uh, the Queen there, but uh, over a zoom lens. And the young lady who presented the bouquet to the Queen was, as far as I remember, one of the pupils of La Sagesse Convent. And then at the end, they roasted an ox, just outside what is now Barclays Bank. And so we come to the end.